Hey everybody, welcome back. David Eon here with another virtual video Toy Fair catalog tour and this time we will be taking a look at the Coleco 1988 games and preschool catalog. And yeah, I know, games and preschool, not as exciting as action figures, which is mostly what you see in a lot of these catalogs, but there's still a lot of interesting items in here that may trigger some memories for you. And this is a really clean one. Often uh, these old Toy Fair catalogs are beat up pretty badly. And you see the Cabbage Patch babies there. Of course, Coleco had the Cabbage Patch license at the time. I don't remember these, to be honest. But the Toy Fair catalog, obviously, is the catalog that was given to the salesman at Toy Fair. And you won't see prices in these catalogs unless it was handwritten in by the salesmen themselves. As we cascade through the baby toys, essentially, that's what this stuff is, baby toys. And of course, that's one of those lullaby lights where it has the holes and it projects the lights on the ceilings. Some like crib toys and such. But don't worry, there's some interesting things in this catalog, believe it or not. We'll just go ahead and cut through here because I do show everything. I do like to show everything in the catalog. I don't typically skip over. This is interesting. you got a cassette player. Bring along a song, it says. A little typewriter. And a computer. There you go. This is a... <laughs> There's a computer for you. Oh, I want a computer for Christmas. Here you go, Jimmy. Thanks for that. And, of course, uh, a telephone. We're not quite at the cell phone stage yet. Not yet. And uh, the Bring Along Song Tape Player, by the way, it doesn't actually play cassette tapes, only its own cassette tapes with pre-recorded songs attached to it, so you can't put like a regular cassette tape in there. I'm very sorry. <laughs> you get screwed over. Some more preschool toys here. As we're moving along, we're already on page 12. And I think there's just a hair over 50 pages in this particular catalog. That's actually kind of neat. I like the train. I like the train there. Bopper box, another simulated tape player. It says, bring along a song, boom box. You all know how popular boom boxes were back in the 80s. Well, this is a boom box you can give to Junior but I think they're gonna know they got okie doked when it doesn't actually do anything. It says it takes one C battery not included. You can uh, hear all eight tunes. Yeah, that's great. Oh, teach your children graffiti. They can scribble on the bathroom walls or on themselves. This kid draws a mustache on his face. It says scribble sticks. Scribble sticks. That's actually kind of neat, as long as they know to only do it in the bathtub. Now, this is cool. Flintstones Kids action figures. And i got to tell you, I was not a fan of the show. It's not a show that I watched or really remember. Saturday morning uh, Flintstones Kids here. And I'll give you a close-up on some of these. But I do appreciate it because of the nostalgia of the Flintstones themselves. I like how they have a burger joint. That's really kind of neat. And here we have the uh, Junior. Although this really breaks canon on the Flintstones because in the original series, Fred, Wilma, Barney, and Betty met at a casino. They did not know each other as children. They did not know each other as children. But again, most of these characters, I, I would have no idea who they are because I did not watch that show. I did not watch the show. But again, I can appreciate it and willing to bet that these figures, along with uh, pretty much everything else in this catalog, aftermarket, are still relatively inexpensive. We've got a couple of play sets here I'll share with you. 
wondering what the cost on these was. And this is probably the entire line. Most Saturday morning cartoon shows only lasted a single season. They may have been played over and over again as if there was more than one season, but usually there was only one season. And sometimes as few as 16 episodes in the season. So that's probably everything Flintstone kids wouldn't surprise me. Now these are a big deal too. You might remember these, the wind-ups. Tomy had a lot of great wind-up style toys as well. But these are cool. These are cool. If I could find these, and I believe they came carded. I could be wrong. I might be thinking of a different toy line. I would collect these on the card myself because that's just neat. That's a really cool throwback. It's sort of like Donkey Kong there, which also had wind-ups, and I think Tomy made those. Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and stuff. Am I thinking of the right one? Preschool, there's Big Bird. It says uh, Big Bird Touch and Talk Preschool Electronic Learning System. And Talking Teacher. And then the board games. The board game section. Some vintage bo board games are really valuable because they're really desirable. Most board games are really cheap aftermarket. You would not spend a lot. Lights Alive by Tomy. So I guess Coleco owned Tomy at this point because I just caught that there. It would explain the wind-ups too. And then these here. Usually it's this kind of stuff that might command a better premium. Something associated with a television show or a movie as far as board games are concerned. But yeah, it's real easy to collect board games on the cheap. Very difficult to display though. There's ALF. ALF board game. What is that? Scrabble Junior. Scrabble Sentence Game. Another Scrabble game. You know, Scrabble had a uh, Halloween special back in the 80s. And it was it's felt every bit of a Hanna-Barbera production, but it was not. It was, and it was the only special in a starring Mr. Scrabble. It was a cartoon. That looks That looks pretty cool. These kind of board games, too, with a lot of weird workings and goings on, are popular. Snapdragon. Sort of a reimagining of Hungry Hungry Hippos, I guess. That's interesting, actually. There you have Mr. Mouth. Who remembers Mr. Mouth? And then these right here, the Starcades, which is from the Tomy division, and I remember these really well. And you see it did come carded. That's pretty neat. I like that. And then naturally, Perfection. Perfection was a cool game. I have a couple of vintage Perfections, and they still work. because craftsmanship meant something back then. Barrel of Monkeys, that's a classic. And then a couple of wannabe handheld video games, because it's just a light-up screen with a, a, a light with a scrolling screen, rather. Both of these, that's still pretty neat, though. That's still pretty neat. And then you... you if you grew up in the 80s, you certainly remember these. And I used to have a couple of these too, the waterfalls. Classic handheld skilled games, harder than they look too. But those were very popular. A few more board games, some travel games pocket-sized waterfalls 
and handheld games and these are all like again they're not really electronic like those it's just a, a light a moving light it's not like an actual video game still cool though and I remember those let's give you a better look at some of these Go for Broke, Aggravation, Aggravation's another classic, Don't Panic, Parcheesi, Spellbound, the board game section in the toy departments of your average department store now have shrunk considerably even over Christmas they're not even half of what they used to be people just don't play board games anymore my wife and I play Scrabble together but you see my point I mean people don't play board games anymore they, they play on their phone or they play a video game this sort of thing is a, a dying art Imagine how cool it would have been to have your own mini pool table when you were a kid. Oh, some uh, foosball tables. Power play, hockey. I wonder how expensive those would have been as stand-ups. And then the... Uh, oh, what did they used to call those? Air hockey tables air hockey tables that seems kind of small to be able to play efficiently though I mean if you can see on the box there you get an idea how small that actually is I mean, it looks like he could reach his arm all the way across the table you need some distance to play air hockey properly Trivial Pursuit the most worthless game ever these were really popular in the 80s but I mean, I, I don't know why. I think they were popular as gifts because I never knew anybody who wanted to play them. <laughs> it's, it's just terrible. I don't know what to say about that. More Trivial Pursuit. And I think that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that is the end of it. That is the end of it. This is the advertising schedule to let you know when they were planning on doing what groupings in wh in which commercial slots for the upcoming year important to know and that's the end of it that's the end of it anything in there strike a memory for you anything in there that you used to have like those waterfalls I used to have a few of those Anything in there that you saw that you were like, hey, I'd like to collect that. Maybe these Flintstones kids triggered that for you. Like, hey, I'd like to go go out and buy those. Or the wind-ups. Are you enjoying the catalog tours? I know I haven't been able to do one for a while, but, you know, getting back into it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Please do. Give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All of that good stuff. And if that's it, then what more can I say but thanks for watching. And I will see you again soon.